You can find yourself stressed out. You can find yourself depressed, mentally fragile because of the experiences, the turbulence that you have gone through. There's always good reasons for not doing what you should. That's for sure. The reasons pile up day after day to not do what you should, especially because you're, you're aiming at things in the future. You can put them off indefinitely, right? Because of the demands of the day. But th these stories, they say a, a variety of things, you know, especially in combination. They say, when you leave somewhere terrible, do not look back. There's no nostalgia. That's, that's the letting the dead parts of yourself go. And then if you're going to follow the good, there's no excuse not to do it. And, that does, and it means no excuse whatsoever, under any circumstances. If there's no excuse whatsoever for not getting at what it is that you should be doing. Now, it's not necessarily that easy to turn and face something, but you do detail out a variety of strategies in your books. And one of the ways of recalibrating that is to break down the problem into small and manageable steps. How did you do it? You created it three ways. Number one, you decided there's something you wanted so bad that you unleashed all your desire. You became obsessed with it. If it was a business or a car or a relationship or a transformation in your body, if there's something you once envisioned and now it's real, it's because you didn't just envision it, you brought so much emotion to it that now it's in your life. I want this. You may have dreamed about it, thought about it, talked about it. But when you focus on something continuously, something magical happens. You envision something, you got clear about it, and then you start thinking about all the reasons why you wanted it. You got excited about it. So this is what's next for me now. Change a little or change something. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life. What can you do starting tomorrow? It'll make a difference. What are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Now, see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. And see, that way you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five. Because the next five are going to be like the last five unless you, major key, tomorrow, change it all spend all your time lamenting and complaining about how bad things are, using your energy negatively rather than positively, complaining rather than producing. That's what we do when we're afraid of really making it. Because when you raise your hands in victory, I want you to own that too. But right now, we got to make this move. What happened to you just now? I don't want to hear about your challenges. We all got them. I don't want to hear about your limitations. What? We all got them. You can experience enough pain in life that it can clobber you to the ground and you believe you can't do it. You believe that this is it for you. No, it's not. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know how bad it hurts you. But I came to tell you what you are going through right now is not how your story is supposed to end. We let the conditions around us convince us that we can't reach what we're trying to reach because of circumstances beyond our control. It's time to put your pieces together of your puzzle. We turn tragedy into triumph. And finally, guys, you gotta wanna succeed as bad as you wanna breathe. The thing that we have to continue to passionately, uncompromisingly not give in on is the fact that I'm not staying stagnant. I'm moving forward. It won't last forever. It's the ultimate challenge is ahead of you. It means you can only go up. And it also means that things are going to be tough. Things are going to be tougher than anything you can imagine. But, but right now, you're being tried. You're being forged. You're being tested by fire and by pain. That's the test. Don't fail the test. Being capable and open to controlling yourself and taking personal accountability for your life is a crucial factor in achieving happiness.
happiness, well being, success, accomplishments, and personal leadership. The act of embracing responsibility is among the most challenging disciplines, yet it's pivotal because success hinges on it. When you evade accepting responsibility and instead try to shift the blame for the aspects of your life causing unhappiness onto others, institutions or circumstances, it distorts the relationship between actions and outcomes. This weakens your character, diminishes your determination and dilutes your essence as a human being. This pattern paves the way for offering endless excuses. In the fast paced world we live in, keeping our focus can be a challenge. We're surrounded by many things that want our attention. Think about all the information, messages, and tasks that come our way every day. They can easily take us away from what truly matters. But here's a secret. When we take responsibility for our actions, it helps us have more control over our lives. It's like a cycle. The more responsibility we accept, the more in control we feel. And when we feel in control, we also feel happier and more positive about things. Imagine you're juggling lots of tasks, like keeping plates spinning in the air. In this fast world, staying focused is like holding onto those spinning plates. Now, here's the interesting part. The more we say, I am responsible, the better we become at handling these tasks. It's almost like a superpower. When we say these words, we're actually saying, that we have a role in what's happening. This helps us feel strong and capable. Plus, it stops negative feelings from stealing our happiness. Whenever we're upset, we can just remind ourselves that we are responsible for our reactions. Now, let's think about intelligence. It's like a tool that can cut in two directions. We can use it to come up with reasons why things aren't our fault or why others are to blame. But we can also use it to find out why we are responsible for what's happening and take action to fix it. It's like choosing between making excuses and making progress. Even in situations like accidents, where we might not be at fault, we're still responsible for how we react. Leaders, those people who guide and inspire others, show us something important. They always take responsibility for what's going on. They don't complain or get upset when problems show up. Instead, they act quickly to solve issues. Being a leader means having a response ability. It's like a super skill that helps us stay calm when things go wrong. Just as we don't get mad at the weather, we don't let things we can't control bother us. And we don't let past events steal our happiness either. It's like saying, what can't be changed, I will accept. This way, we don't let old memories make us sad. Now, let's talk about controlling our emotions. Imagine you're the boss of your feelings. Taking charge of your emotions starts with saying, I am responsible for how I feel. This means we don't blame others or make excuses for our feelings. Instead, we take control by deciding how we'll react to what happens. Even when we're angry or worried, the best way to feel better is to take action towards our goals. But before we dive into action, we need to decide that we'll be the boss of our thoughts, feelings, and actions. We stay busy with important things so we don't have time for negative feelings. By being in control of ourselves, we become more powerful, happier, and positive in everything we do. The key to focused thinking isn't just about dealing with distractions. It's about creating a world where we're in charge of our thoughts, where we can be more creative, get things done, and become better versions of ourselves. It's like a special ability we have to choose what we focus on in a world full of things trying to get our attention. So remember, by taking responsibility and staying in control, we can lead a happier and more successful life. Succeeding in life has always been a matter of doing that which the great majority does not do. Now let's keep this in mind as we get into this business of goals. It isn't that I want to make an invidious comparison between the 5% and the 95%. Not at all. That's just the way it is. And if we don't recognize it, it will be to our cost. 
If you can tell me what you want, I can tell you how to get it. You see, the trick is not in achieving our goals. It is in establishing them. A ship would never leave a harbor if it did not have a destination. An industrial plant would never open its gates if it did not have a product or a purpose. Football would not be played without goal posts. Nor would baseball without a home plate. Every business operates for a purpose. Every game has a reason. Getting back to the analogy of our ship, if you were to climb to the navigation bridge and ask the captain the name and location of his next port of call, he would tell you immediately. There's not the slightest doubt in his mind. Can you tell anyone your destination just as quickly and in one sentence? The captain of the ship knows that he can arrive at only one port at a time. He knows that it's impossible to arrive at two. Do you know that? He also knows that his destination will be invisible for fully 99% of his voyage, but he knows it's there and that he'll reach it, barring an unforeseen catastrophe, if he will just keep doing certain things a certain way every day. One fine morning, his destination will appear on the horizon. He'll sail into port, his voyage successfully completed. When his business has been accomplished, he'll then sail to another predetermined port of call. And this will take him and his ship from one success to another for the rest of both of their lives. By understanding that he can reach only one port at a time, the owner of ship can, in the short space of a very few years, reach hundreds of ports successfully. There'll be problems, lots of them, but they'll be solved and the ship will steam its solitary course over the deep oceans of the world devoting its life to accomplishing its mission and contributing its share to the welfare and economy of the world. Men and women who follow this sensible, obvious, and meaningful way of life will do the same. But the paradox is that most are like ships without rudders. They're subject to the whims of wind and tide. And while they hope they'll one day arrive in a rich and bustling port, you and I know that for every narrow harbor entrance, There's a thousand miles of treacherous and rocky coastline. The chances of their just drifting into port are a thousand to one against them. These are the unfortunate people who, not knowing the rules, believe that circumstance controls our lives. They believe in luck and superstition, fate, the breaks. They believe that success comes as a result of who you know, not what you know. And while they cling to their false alibis, life passes them by, for the rules of life are just and they are checkmated without haste, but without remorse. Now, what about you? Remembering that the definition of success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. What's the ideal toward which you are working? Now today, yesterday, and tomorrow? Can you write it in one sentence? Is your goal sharply and clearly defined? I could tell you how you could be and have anything you set your mind on in five years. To better understand this, you must examine one of the most overlooked facts in the world. It is that every job, no matter what it may be, holds somewhere within itself the key to everything we want in life, the key to greatness. But we must look for it, and we must think. Decide to become a professional at your business. You see, we can either compete or create. If we compete with all the other people in our line of work, we must be willing to accept the same rewards. If that's what we want, fine. But if we want to become professionals at what we do, then we must create. And when we begin to do this, there's no limit to that which we can achieve.